Hi, and welcome to the first uh, LinVid tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about installing software in Ubuntu. First off, you have two ways to install things in Ubuntu. One is from Synaptic Package Manager, and the other is from Add Remove. Now you can also do this from Terminal, but most people that don't know how to do this would rather do it with the package managers. So let's get started with uh, Synaptic. First you, uh, first you go to System, and then you go to Administration, and then you go to Synaptic Package Manager. And then you type in your password. Now when you first load up Synaptic Package Manager after refresh install, you're not going to have very many repositories. What repositories are is they they give you access to um, sites such as the Ubuntu package site and others, and they allow you to search for certain packages and download them. To get these, you're going to want to go first off to Applications accessories and terminal. Now what this is is basically like command prompt. I'm sure you're familiar with it possibly in Microsoft Windows. Um, you got just your normal prompt here. Now there's a command called sudo which lets you access all administrative uh, privilege, privileges what this does is allow you to edit certain files that you can't edit when you're in your user account. So we're going to type in sudo space apt dash get space update. Enter. Then type in your password. Now it won't show your password when you type it, so don't freak out. do is it's going to update all your repositories. Now let's say let's say you wanted a certain thing, a certain program like let's say a doc. Now let's say this doc isn't in the pre-installed repositories. Um, we'll get into that a bit later but what you'd have to do is there's a file called sources and uh, what you'd have to do is go into that file you can go in that file using terminal or you, if you know where it's at you could go and edit it that way and you would add the repository like uh, for example a lot of these that you see on your screen things like these you would add in the sources list therefore when you do apt get update it'll update all these repositories and therefore you would be able to download your doc per se right from Ubuntu itself. So it's pretty easy. Like I said, we'll get into repositories and things like that in another tutorial. So now that you got these all set, your basic repositories, now you can go into Synaptic Package Manager and you can search. Now a lot of you probably use YouTube a lot and you probably want to watch videos right away. Well this isn't this isn't the case in Ubuntu. You're going to have to agree to the terms and get Flash installed. Um, as with any operating system, uh, Firefox, which is the default browser in Ubuntu, does not have the Flash plugin pre-installed. Um, you can get this the normal way on the Flash website for Ubuntu if you want, but now they made it a little bit easier and you can get it either in Synaptic or you can get it in Firefox. I'll show you the Synaptic way first. So you would go to search in Synaptic and you type in Flash. <coughs> You're going to want to scroll down and 
find where it says flash plugin non free. Um, I give you a description. As you can see, it's for any browser based on Netscape or Mozilla. Um, you can also use this on Galleon. I don't use that browser, but hey, go for it if you like it. You can also search for that, I'm assuming, in uh, Snapic. But after you get after you get the results for Flash and you find Flash plugin non-free, you're gonna want to click on it. Left click on the checkbox and mark for installation. Now you see I can't do that because I've already installed it. But if I wanted to, I could mark for reinstallation, mark for removal, or mark for complete removal, which will get rid of all the Flash files. Um, the only thing it won't get rid of is some of the settings which are located in your home folder. Um, this You can get to this uh, by going to places, home folder. Now the configuration for most programs aren't shown when you first open your home folder. To see hidden files you hold control and press H. Now you can see there's a lot of folders with a period before the name. Um, I believe Flash would be in here. If it's not, then you won't have to worry about it. But this is where all your um, all your configurations for your programs are. A lot of times, if you're getting rid of getting rid of a program uh, and you reinstall it, and you're still having problems. Uh, with it, you know, not working or wh why ever you tried to uninstall it and reinstall it, uh, a lot of times you're going to have to go in here and get rid of one of these folders. It'll usually have the name of the program, like, see, we got Skype here and we got themes, all sorts of things like that. So that's that's basically it for installing software. Like I said, there's another way you can go to applications. Uh, and then you can click add remove this also checks your repositories for some reason my thing is going so slow today don't know why. And um, this one, this one's a little bit easier for people that are new to Ubuntu or Linux. Um, it it gives you pictures and icons and descriptions and uh, categories. There's all sorts of games and graphics and programming tools. There's all sorts of sound and video. Um, one thing you're probably going to want to get is things like MP3 codecs. So let's try typing in codec up here in the search bar. As you can see, there's uh, codecs to play videos. That's important. And there's uh, DStreamer. I would recommend getting as many G streamer codecs as you can. Um, doesn't look like it's finding the MP3 one here. Um, but yes, it's not going to be able to play MP3s right off the bat. Now you can search in here for MP3, and there you got G streamer extra plugins. You got the G streamer video plugins and. Those are the main two ones. Uh, you can actually get these by trying to play an MP3 in Rhythmbox, which is an applications, sound and video, Rhythmbox music player. Now this is a new um, addition to Ubuntu. Before you would actually have to get these, uh, you'd have to actually get these codecs separate. But now if you try to play an MP3 in here and it can't support it. It'll ask you if you want to search for the codec. So it's a little bit easier now. And I think that things are getting better. 
and that these things aren't very hard once you get used to them. But that's the end of the first tutorial, and thanks for watching.